All right, and welcome to our video on how to set up your file for the CNC to create our base. So what we're actually going to do first is we're going to come in here into Inventor because we are going to make a drawing of just the base so that way we can use it in Aspire. Now, if you're using one of our class set of computers, the program you'll actually be using instead of Aspire is called VCar. We'll talk about that in just a second. But as we get into our drawing here, before we import anything, I want to adjust the sheet size. So what I'm doing is I'm right clicking where it says sheet one so that I can edit the sheet. I'm gonna change this to a size A piece of paper. So that's our standard printer piece. So eight and a half by 11. And I'm also going to get rid of the default border. So right click and delete and also the ANSI, so that title block, right click and delete. Then I can go ahead and bring in my base. Remember that you can search for it by using that little button. Hopefully it is saved in your H drive with all of your other files. And when we do this on the CNC, we really just need the front view of it. The thickness, which we would normally see in that top view, that's just determined by the piece of wood that we're getting. So the piece of wood that I've given you, I've made sure to make it as thick as we need it. So we don't actually need anything but the front view. With this, do triple check to make sure that your scale is one to one. It is very important here that we are working with the actual size with our CNC. So once I go ahead and get all that adjusted, I will click OK, and it gives me just this outline. Now bringing this back up, just in case we need another look, you do have the option to change the style here. So you could have hidden lines, hidden lines removed, or also shaded. All of these are good, but I will suggest for this that you have just the outline, so shaded is turned off, hidden lines removed is turned off, and hidden line is selected. That's what's gonna give us just this solid outline with the most contrast, and you'll see in a moment why that's important. When we are done with that, we're gonna go ahead and export it as a PDF. And again, we're just gonna name this as our base.pdf, putting it somewhere where we will be able to find it easily, which is most likely our H drive. I'm gonna pop this right back in here, PDF. Now to go ahead and get into our Aspire software or perhaps VCarve software, depending on what computer you are working on, you might be going to the My Applications folder to find Aspire. If you are working on a school issued Chromebook that like you take home every night, or you might be looking for a desktop program called VCarve. They're both very similar programs. They actually come from the same company, Vectric. Vectrix. Um, Aspire is just the slightly more expensive version, whereas VCarve is the cheaper version. But both of them have the capability to do everything we need to. So right now I'm looking at Aspire. VCarve looks very, very similar. And we're gonna start off by creating a new file. In here, we are going to adjust the job size. We want the width of this to be three inches wide and the height is gonna go ahead and be five inches. That is the size, oh sorry, four inches wide, four inches wide by five inches. That is the size of the piece of wood that you are going to receive for this part. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust that. And the thickness is 0.25, so one quarter of an inch. Our Z zero position should be on the material surface and the XY datum position should be in that bottom left-hand corner. Once we've double checked all that, we'll click OK, and then we are going to open our vector, and that's actually what we created when we made our PDF. So to do that again in slow motion, right over here where it says File Operations, we have options to New, Open, Save, or Import Vectors. Before, we've just used Import Bitmaps, but our PDF is actually already a vector. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. Now with this, I can use my transform tool to click and drag it, but I do not want to resize it. I just want to move it. I'm gonna move it to the center, and there are a couple of ways that we can do this. If we wanted to align our selected objects, we can align it uh, in the center of the page. Sorry, align to material, there we go. So we can align it to the center of the page, both up and down and also left and right. But again, we do not want to change the size. One thing we will do though, is we will join our vectors. So under edit objects, that's the same place where we found our transform tool. Down here at the bottom, we are going to join our open vectors, which essentially is just gonna sense any small gaps in between our vectors 
to close them all so that we can click on things uh, and they will be closed vectors rather than open vectors. For some of our purposes, open vectors do cause a bit of an issue. So once we have all of that done, we're gonna go ahead and create our tool paths. We are actually going to create two separate tool paths. We're gonna start with our circles. Now what I'm doing on my keyboard that you can't see is I am holding down the shift key so that I can select multiple things. So I'm holding the shift key and that allows me to click on both circles. With both circles selected, I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to create a pocket toolpath, which is going to drill inside of these circles, which will help us preserve the size. The cut depth that I'm gonna set is all the way through, so 0.25 inches, and the tool that I am using is a quarter inch end mill. So as we look at this illustration, it has a flat bottom, which is going to be really nice for us cutting all the way through. It does look a little bit different than the V-bits that we're used to using, but that quarter inch end mill is perfect for this project. We are gonna double check that our step over here is at 40%. If it's at anything else, you can change it to 40. That's just gonna help us preserve some time and go ahead and select that tool. As we scroll down, we're gonna go ahead and calculate that tool path and it will show us the ability to create those two little circles. So that's our preview. From there, I'm gonna to toggle back to my 2D view so that I can select the outside outline. Again, I'm holding down that shift key so that I can select all of the parts. And this time I'm going to create a profile. Now with our profile, it's going to follow this outline and we have a couple of options and we need to be very careful about which one we select. If we are going to have our tool go on the outside and to the right, that is gonna help us preserve the size of exactly what we have here. So our piece of wood that we're taking away is this size. If it's on the inside to the right, your tool is gonna to be inside this outline. So it's actually gonna wind up smaller than we want. So we do not want that one. And if it's on, then it's gonna split the difference. So it's not as aggressively missized, but it still is not the correct size. So we wanna make sure that we have outside selected. And again, our cut depth here is going to be 0.25 with a quarter inch end mill. One additional thing that we're going to do with our profile is that we are going to add tabs to our toolpath. So as we scroll down just a little bit, we're adding tabs. The length of these tabs is gonna be half an inch, so 0.5, and the thickness is going to be 1 8th of an inch, so 0.125. What a tab is, is it's going to be a little chunk of material that is going to help hold our base to the rest of the piece of wood so that it doesn't go flying across the lab. We will cut these tabs off manually after the fact using a bandsaw, but while we are CNCing, we need to make sure that we leave those tabs. You can do anywhere between two and four, so if you wanted to adjust the constant number, you certainly can. It's up to you how you would like to do that. You need at least two tabs. Once you have your tabs and you have all of these other settings correct, you can go ahead and calculate that toolpath. If it gives you any kind of error message about having open contours, it's asking if you would like to join them and you're just gonna click okay and it does the work for you. From there, again, you'll see we have our toolpath and you can see the tabs that it's leaving behind that we will cut out manually. Those are helping to make sure that this material does not break free. After we've double checked our preview, we're now gonna go ahead and save our toolpath and it's very important that we click this little box right up here. So this one says output all visible toolpaths to one file. This is super important because we have two toolpaths and we want to output them both to the same file so that our machine does the circles and then without further prompting does the outline as well. If you don't click that button, you'll notice it only saves one toolpath and that creates a little bit of a headache for us. Ideally, when we are saving this, we'll notice that our pocket toolpath comes first and then our profile toolpath. That is also very important. That's why we did this in this order. And then we'll save our post processor to that CNC Shark USB arcs inches, which will make it a TAP. As you are saving this toolpath, again, saving it to your H drive, I'm gonna recommend that you name it your initials, the letter B, so we remember it's the base, and your class period. 
So it's only about four characters, maybe five if you wanted to include your middle initial or if your last name or first name has more than one initial, but it should not be a super long name. We'll go ahead and save that, and at that point you are ready to insert your flash drive, transfer your file, and then head over to the CNC. When you are on the CNC, all of our normal CNC setup applies. You'll want to make sure that when you are zeroing the material that you put your material so that it is five inches tall and four inches long and that we set it up so it's zeroed in that bottom left corner. Remember to grab a sheet of paper so you can check the Z zero appropriately and let a peer expert or Miss Marshall know if you have any questions.